Today I want to share with you how one of the most successful, if not the most successful investor in the world, valued his stocks. This here on the picture is Peter Lynch. And from 1977 to 1999, he managed a fund that averaged a 29.2% annual return, consistently more than the double of the S&P 500. Now, during the 13 years he managed this fund, the fund increased from 18 million USD to 14 billion USD with a B. And after hearing this, it is no wonder why I want to teach you guys how to use his formula. Now, to create the model, we'll use Google Sheets and we'll create the model fully automatic. That means that all the data will be automatically scraped from the web. It is fairly simple, so stick through the video and let me explain everything. So the way the Peter Lynch model works is that we take the future growth of earnings per share predicted by analysts in this case and add the dividend yield of the company. We then divide everything by the current PE ratio of the company. Now this here is all the data we need. The earnings per share growth and the dividend yield are the two metrics we will be scraping off the web and the PE ratio. To find the PE ratio, we will use the Google Finance formula. Now from that, we will get the Lynch decimal. And later in the video, I will show you guys how to turn the Lynch decimal into the intrinsic value of the company you are evaluating. So the first thing we want to do is create a cell where we will be plugging in the ticker symbols for the companies we want to evaluate. For example, now I have CVS, we can plug in the waste management, WM, and the metric shop automatically. And that's the beauty of this model. After putting the work of creating it, it is very simple to evaluate any company. Now to scrape the data of the web, we will again use a few formulas. So the first thing we will do is I will scroll to the right here. And as you can see, we have the engine. And this is the formula we use to scrape the earnings per share growth estimates and the earnings per share historical growth. And as we can see, this is the metrics metric we are looking for right here. Now to actually get all this data to show up, we have to plug in the cell where we have provided the ticker symbol before. So as we can see, we can I plug in the cell G2 and that's the cell that my ticker symbol is sitting in. I will provide all these formulas in the description so that you guys don't need to copy them word for word. Now after having all this data displayed, we have to calculate the average earnings per share growth. Now the way I like to conduct my Peter Lynch model is slightly different from the Peter Lynch model itself. As we can see here in the normal Peter Lynch model, we have the future growth of earnings per share. Now, the fact that the future growth of earnings per share is predicted by analysts, and I don't really like to trust analysts, I also take the earnings per share, the historical earnings per share growth, and combine it with the predicted earnings per share growth. And this gives me an average earnings per share growth over the past five years and over the next five years that will come in the future. And to get this, we'll use this formula right here, which I will again provide in the description of the video. Now having this, we have to input this cell that we calculate everything in. We have to input it here. And that's the first step to completing the Lynch model. Now the next thing we want is the dividend yield. And the dividend yield, again, we will use another formula to scrape off the web. Now the thing with this formula is that it only takes the decimal. So when we plug it in as it is, we get 0 0.0143. So we have to multiply it by 1 at the end. To get the number we want to get the percentage now to get the final metric the pe ratio we will use the google finance function now the google finance function for the pe ratio is quite slow sometimes to load and sometimes it doesn't load at all and that's why we will calculate our own pe ratio using two google finance functions first we'll use google finance to get the current stock price of the company and then we will divide by the current earnings per share of that company getting our own PE ratio basically calculating it on our own instead of using the Google Finance to get it for us now using the formula up here as we can see we take the earnings per share growth and we add the dividend yield we then have to put this in brackets and multiply everything by 100 as the two metrics here are in percentages and we want them in normal numbers. After that, we'll divide everything by the PE ratio and we'll get our Lynch decimal. Now what the Lynch decimal shows 
is that when the number is below 1, the company is overvalued, and when it is above 1, the company is undervalued. And therefore, a simple trick we will do is bring out the current stock price of the company, again using the Google Finance formula, and we will multiply it by the Lynch decimal, and that will give us the intrinsic value of that company. Now, of course, if you don't want to use the earnings per share growth method I use, and rather want to stick to the original Peter Lynch model, you are completely welcome to do that. The only thing you will have to do is instead of using all the percentages here, you will only use the percentages from 2024, that is the predicted growth percentage for the earnings per share. With that, if you guys are fans of value investing and like to find the intrinsic values of companies, I would highly recommend you to check out my other videos or to check out my Patreon in the link in the description where you can download my stock valuation spreadsheets. Again, fully automatic. There you have the nine pillars, the Grams formula, the discount cash flow analysis, multiples valuation model and the dividend discount model. And using that, you can arrive to the ultimate intrinsic value of any company, whether it is a dividend company or a non-dividend company. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to support me. And let me know down in the comments which video you'd like me to create next. 